Okay, so we went over chapters 17 and 18 pretty quickly in class, so I said I'd go over them more de in more detail. Uh, now, chapter 17 is about the limitations of significance tests. And what's uh, significance tests can only tell you whether or not a difference that you see is likely to be due to chance, not whether that difference is something that's important or not. Um, so remember that if we had uh, data on the whole population, if we saw a difference and we had the entire population, no matter how tiny that difference was, we'd say it's significant, um, statistically significant. That doesn't mean that you care about it. So here's an example. Suppose we wanted to compare IQ scores of men and women. And so we take a, a random sample, this huge sample of 10,000 men and 10,000 women, and we find this uh, difference uh, in their IQs of 1 point, 100 versus 101. Well, one point, that might, we don't really care about a one point difference, but it would be statistically significant just because our sample sizes are so big. Like if we figured out a z-score, uh, remember what z is. z equals the observed difference, so that would be a one point difference, over the standard error for the difference. Right? And this standard error um, would be figured as what? The stand, we'd have to figure out the standard errors for each of the samples for the males and the females, and they'd be the same because they have the same standard deviation here and the same sample size. And we're talking about averages, so it would be the SD over the square root of 10,000. So that's 0 0.2. And then we combine them to get the standard error of the difference. We combine them as the square root of the sum of their squares. And when we did that, we'd get 3.53, which is a huge z-score. So what that means is just by the luck of the draw, we'd see this result, this one, uh, this one point difference, if we expected the null would be, that in terms of difference, that there's no difference in their IQs at all in terms of IQ scores. And when we translate that into a Z, because we have such huge sample sizes, um, the averages aren't going to bounce around when you have 10,000 men and 10,000 women that much. So this one point difference we, do, we weren't sure who was, we had no hypothesis about whether males or females were going to do better. Uh, turns out to be this one point difference in either direction would turn out to be what? Between 3.53 and negative 3.53. And that's 99.96. So the chance, our p-value, would just be this tiny little spot on either side. I drew it big so you can see it. But really, you know, 3.53 is really much further out there. And we'd get a p-value equal to 100 minus 99.96, which is 0.04%. That's tiny, hugely significant, but who cares about it? a one-point difference. That's what I'm saying. It might not be of any practical importance. So don't confuse practical significance with uh, statistical significance because with a large enough sample size, any difference, no matter how tiny, can be found to be statistically significant because our standard errors, we can make them arbitrarily small by increasing the sample size. But that doesn't make the difference, that tiny difference, important. And um, similarly, conversely, if our sample sizes are too small, we might not be able to detect an important difference, one we care about. So um, I just want you to remember that statistical significance and practical significance are, very two, are two different concepts. Now, um, the other thing that... Uh, 
a limitation of significance tests is that it's very easy to cheat with them. Um, you probably, uh, you can do this in many ways, and most, uh, the idea, if you understand what significance is, uh, statistical significance, remember that it assumes the null, that the result, that there's, the effect you see is just due to chance. And then you calculate the probability that you'd see such a such a result just by the luck of the draw. So the p-value gives you that chance. So for if you run a hundred tests, you'd uh, expect five of them to result in statistically significant results at the five percent cutoff, null cutoff by definition. Um, so if you chair, if you look, run the test a hundred times and just show the five results that you got to be statistically significant, that defeats the whole purpose. And that would be cheating, or p-hacking is what it's often called. So uh, beware of p-hacking, uh, looking over all the results, data snooping. Basically cheating. So um, that's the idea, and here's some examples of that. So uh, let's say you have this liver cancer is a rare disease, which sometimes is caused by environmental pollutants. And the chance of having two or more cases in a given year in a town of 10,000 is small, about 0.5%. So let's say you have a cluster of liver cancers in a small community. So you, um, that would be very alarming. But if you go searching through many communities looking for um, liver cancer, then you're going to find, just by the luck of the draw, you'll find, so you'd find a few uh, clusters just uh, even if all the towns had no environmental pollutants. Um, so here's a good example of that. Suppose that um, the EPA reviews the incidence of liver cancers, liver cancer in a thousand towns of this size over a 10-year period looking for possible contaminants. Now, how many clusters would you expect them to find just by chance? Well, if you have a hundred towns over 10 years times 10 years, that's a thousand cases, a thousand town year combinations. And 0.5% of a thousand is equal to five. So you'd expect um, five clusters of, of uh, liver cancer um, even when, even if, even when, um, the towns are all clean and have no uh, water, you know, contaminated water supplies. Um, of course, what you'd want to do then is to look at these, you know, five towns and uh, see if there was an environmental pollutant, but you, this in itself is not evidence, because you'd expect that. Okay, so that's the idea. And another, uh, here's another example, is on the next page here, suppose you did an experiment on uh, ESP and it's repeated a thousand times. Um, even if there's no ESP and the experiment's done correctly, how many experiments would you expect to find statistically statistical significance evidence for ESP um, at the 5% level. Well, by definition, you'd expect 5% of the 1,000, which is equal to 50. Um, so 50 would show evidence even when there's no ESP. So people, I mean, this happens a lot where people run many experiments and just cherry pick the the ones that show significant results 
and um, that's cheating. So you can't look over many, many results and then just pick out the ones that are significant. without reporting how many uh, experiments you ran or looked at. Okay, so that's the idea. And uh, the last thing I want you to um, remember is that there's nothing um, sacred or special about the 5% uh, cutoff. It's just a convention. Um, does a p-value of 4.999 mean anything different than a p-value um, of 5.001? Not really. It's not like there's no mass mathematical justification for the 5% cutoff. Um, no. Uh, this 5% cutoff is simply a convention. These are basically the same result. Um, and there's no mathematical justification for it. Don't think that there's something special about 5%. Remember um, how we're deciding this. We're looking often, when we're looking at the normal curve, for example, and we decide that the 5% significance level, we're just saying, okay, at some point we're going to make a decision. We expect, when the null is true, that um, you'd get around here. At some point we're saying, okay, we're getting enough, enough. It's very rare to see a result this far from the null when the null is true. And we just set this 5%, that just means that this is 5% in the tail or 5% in the two tails, for no particular reason. Look, that there's no justification for this because it's um, a curve. It's a gradual change. The sampling distribution of our test statistic is not, does not drop off. It's not a curve. This, think of the, um, the sampling distribution. This is what this is. The sampling distribution of our um, test statistics, if it's a z or a t or a chi-square, is um, a smooth curve. It doesn't have a sharp dropping off point to justify any particular uh, cutoff. It's not a... Um, it has no, it's not a cliff, right? A cliff would look like what? Instead of having something like this, we'd say, okay, um, you know, we'd, we'd expect around here maybe, and all of a sudden there's this sharp drop off that leads to this tiny 5%. It doesn't look like that. It doesn't say, oh, we have, you know, it looks like nothing's going on, and bingo! You know, 5% of the time, all of a sudden, we get clear evidence. It doesn't look like that, okay? So uh, those are a few things to keep in mind.